ladies and gentlemen of St. Mary Parish here in Schwenksville, PA. Um, this is, my name is Kevin Kelly. Again, I'm the seminarian that comes out on Thursdays along with uh, Santiago uh, as part of our field education at the, for, uh, from St. Charles Seminary on Thursdays. So I wanted to talk about um, a few recent feast days that we've had. Uh, as I record this, today is November 11th, uh, which is the feast of St. Martin of Tours. And about a week ago, we had uh, St. Charles Borromeo. And these are uh, important feasts uh, for the priests and seminarians here in Philadelphia because uh, St. Charles, of course, is the patron of our seminary. And in particular, we have a chapel at the seminary called St. Martin's. So November is a festive time at the seminary as we celebrate these big feasts, these big occasions at the seminary. Uh, first of all, St. Charles, is a saint from about the 16th century. He was a cardinal, um, an archbishop of Milan in Italy. Uh, he was born to a wealthy family and you know, it was very common at the time for there to be a lot of family influence in both church and state. So you know, young Charles was born into a wealthy uh, Italian family. He, 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 his uncle was the Pope. I mean, he just had all kinds of connections and had, the life was made for him. He was going to be wealthy, you know, he had, you know, money coming in. But um, he took his faith very seriously and uh, he had a great concern for the poor and a great desire to be faithful to the church. He lived, you know, very frugally, you know, for this, you know, the standards of his, you know, wealthy family, which was not to say he, you know, lived a, a bare bones diet and that kind of thing, but he, he did, he didn't live beyond his means. Um, and was always very concerned for the poor. He was very involved in the Council of Trent and in applying its reforms. Uh, the Council of Trent was a response to a need for reform in the church, as well as many movements by you know, a growing group you know, known as the Protestants, you know, with Martin Luther, with John Calvin, and, and many others who you know, reacted not just to the, the moral state of the church, but also to some theological objections that they had, leading them to protest, to revolt, you know, Protestant Reformation. Uh, so all that was going on, the church responded, held the Council of Trent to really, you know, lock down on doctrinal issues, and this is what we believe, as well as on moral issues. This is how the church needs to be uh, reformed and changed. So Charles was um, very big into implementing these reforms, and when he was made Archbishop of Milan, he was very fastidious in ensuring that the reforms were put in place in his archdiocese. One thing that he's also known for and why he's the patron of our seminary is that he was a big promulgator of the seminary, which was a, a, a way of training priests that had started to arise already before the council, but became the norm after the council for seminary formation. He was a big promoter of implementing seminaries and getting men trained for the priesthood via seminary formation, which involves studies, you know, formation in the context of a, of a group of an institution, as opposed to just priests, you know, seminarians only following priests around for their whole formation. Uh, one of the things he's especially famous for during his ministry as an archbishop was, there was a great famine uh, and, and disease that was ravaging the city at one point, and many of the city officials fled the city for fear of their lives. But um, Archbishop, really Cardinal Borromeo, he stuck it out and he used his own, his family's money, his own expenses to pay for food for the poor, to have food shipped in and to feed the poor who, you know, in time of famine, in time of you know, plague, would have had no recourse to anything else. And it's said that he, he fed you know, thousands and thousands of people every day until he finally could convince officials to move back to the city and to restore order. So really an amazing man. And um, when he died, he was very much acclaimed and uh, his, his cause for canonization was, was quick to be picked up after that. So we celebrate the feast day of St. Charles every November 4th. And of course, that being the patron feast of the seminary, we at the seminary have a, a big celebration that day. We have a very solemn mass and uh, one thing that we do at the seminary is the rite of candidacy. Candidacy is a, sort of a chance for guys in formation for the priesthood to make a formal expression of their intent to prepare for, you know, God willing to be ordained a priest uh, for, you know, 
the church. And uh, it's a chance also for, for a bishop to receive that, you know, that pro proclamation of their formal intent. So it's just a, a really nice step for the church to recognize you know, the work that a young man is doing towards preparation for the priesthood, as well as for that man to really realize that, you know, and to express himself, I'm choosing this, I want to pursue this, I believe this is what the Lord is calling me to do. Now, so that's uh, November 4th. Now, likewise, November 11th, again, is an important feast day at the church. We have a beautiful chapel at the seminary, St. Martin of Tours Chapel. Um, in fact, you know, as today, we just had Mass there in St. Martin's and we had a beautiful homily by our own Father Collins who gave us a little bit of history of St. Martin. Uh, St. Martin lived in the 4th century, the 300s. Uh, he was born to uh, a Hungarian family, but went on to join the Roman military and served as a soldier for a while. The most famous story of, of his, of course, is that while he was on patrol and it was, it was cold out, um, and he was trying to keep warm in his Roman cloak, and he came across a, a beggar, someone who was very poorly clad and shivering. And so St. Martin you know, took his cloak, he took out his, his sword, cut his cloak in half, and gave half of his cloak to the beggar before proceeding on. Now that night, in a dream, he saw our Lord appear to him, and our Lord was wearing that half of a cloak that St. Martin had given to him and showed him that you know, by clothing this beggar, you were in fact clothing me. The St. Martin, of course, is recorded as being very struck by this vision. And of course, um, he, whether he was a Christian already or whether this is what brought him to Christianity, he left the army, um, joined the church, went on to become a priest and uh, was also made a bishop in Tours of France. And that's where he, um, you know, he lived there first as a, as a monk and as a priest and then eventually as a bishop. And he was uh, well regarded for his holiness, his, his sanctity. And when he died in the late in the 300s, uh, he was very quick to be canonized as saint. And he's one of the first saints in the church to be canonized without being a martyr. Before then, the most of the, if not all of the saints of the church had been recognized because they had died for the faith. Uh, instead, Mar St. Martin boasts the title of confessor, someone who has suffered for the faith, but not actually died a martyr's death. So, now, what, you know, how do these two saints impact our lives today? Obviously, I mentioned the connection to the seminarian. For St. Charles, he's a patron saint of seminarians, among other things. So we at the seminary have a big devotion to St. Charles, you know, he, you know, as someone who is, you know, a model of, you know, seminary formation and a uh, big supporter of those in formation for the priesthood. Uh, he also is, he has a great love for the poor. So, you know, if you, especially at Thanksgiving coming up, you know, it's a time that we're thankful for the, the food that we have, the many blessings we have in our lives. And it's a great time to think about those, the poor, the needy, um, those who go without, you know, regular food and meals. Um, there are some of the other seminarians that go on up, uh, to caring for friends and are helping prepare meals and they're going to go help um, put together some Thanksgiving meals for homeless throughout the city. So um, St. Charles, you know, is someone we can think of in terms of, you know, someone we can pray to to help us, you know, look for the love for the poor and to help, you know, inspire us into knowing how we can serve them. Um, St. Martin's Feast Day, you know, without, you know, is no coincidence it's on November 11th because this is, of course, the day we celebrate Veterans Day. The day that we honor all those who have given you know time uh, in the military in service of one of the many uh, branches, you know, Army, Navy, Marines, Coast Guard, Space Force, uh, and especially to those who have given their lives in service to their country, who have lost their lives uh, in you know, military service. Um, so Saint Martin, of course, you know, was that military man. He was a veteran himself, and so he is a patron saint of soldiers and someone whose intercession we can ask for the sake of all of our soldiers, so that those who are currently deployed or in service, those who are, are veterans who have served, and in particular for those who have given their lives uh, in service to the country. So for all those who are veterans or are in the military, you know, thank you so much for your service, for all that you do for our country. You know, really, we are indebted to you. I'm quite grateful to you for all that you do. And you let you, you know, it enables us to live and you know, the life that we live, the freedom we live, the peace that we enjoy. So, well, 
again, happy Veterans Day to you all. Happy Feast of St. Mark's to you. Um, even if you're watching this after the fact, I encourage you to you know, take some time if, you know, to, to pray to St. Charles or to St. Martin and ask for their intercession. Thank you all so much. God bless.